Absorption and movement of water and mineral salts in plants. Plants absorb water and mineral salts from the soil through their roots. This process is facilitated by osmosis, which is the movement of water from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration across a semi-permeable membrane. The root hairs of plants increase the surface area for absorption, allowing them to take in more water and minerals. As water and mineral salts move into the root, they are transported upwards through the stem and into the leaves through a process called transpiration. Transpiration is the loss of water vapor from the leaves through small pores called stomata, which open and close to regulate the exchange of gases and water vapor. The movement of water and mineral salts through the plant is also facilitated by a process called the cohesion tension theory, which proposes that water molecules stick together, cohesion, and create a continuous column of water that is pulled up from the roots by the force of water evaporating from the leaves, tension. In addition to their absorption and movement through the plant, water and mineral salts also play important roles in various plant functions, such as photosynthesis, respiration, and the maintenance of turgor pressure. Forces involved in movement of water. The movement of water in plants is driven by a combination of physical forces, including 1. Cohesion, the tendency of water molecules to stick together as a result of hydrogen bonding. This creates a continuous column of water that is pulled up from the roots to the leaves. Two. Adhesion, the attraction of water molecules to surfaces, such as the walls of plant cells and the xylem vessels. This force helps to prevent the water column from breaking apart as it rises up the plant. 3. Tension, the force created by the evaporation of water from the leaves, which pulls water molecules upwards through the plant. 4. Root pressure, the pressure created by the active transport of ions into root cells, which causes water to move into the root through osmosis. Figure 4.29, absorption of water and mineral salts through the root hair cell. 5. Transpiration pull, the force created by the movement of air over the surface of leaves, which increases the rate of evaporation and pulls water out of the leaf. Fig. 4.30, transpiration pull. Together, these various physical forces create a continuous flow of water from the soil through the roots and up into the leaves, where it is used for photosynthesis and other important plant processes. One practical way to investigate the path which water and mineral salts take from the roots to the leaves is to conduct a transpiration experiment. 1. Firstly, a potted plant with a plastic bag over it can be used. 2. Then, a stem of the plant should be cut and a leaf should be removed from the stem. 3. Next, the cut stem should be inserted into a tube filled with water and a small amount of dye. 4. The plastic bag should then be wrapped around the stem and sealed at the base to form an airtight chamber around the leaf and stem. 5. The plant should then be placed in a bright, sunny spot. 6. Over time, water and mineral salts will be transported through the plant, ultimately exiting through the stomata on the surface of the leaf. 7. The dye will provide a visual representation of the pathway that the water and minerals took through the plant. 8. By measuring the rate of water loss from the tube and comparing it to the size of the leaf, the rate of transpiration can be calculated. This practical experiment can provide valuable insight into the transport of water and mineral salts in plants. The results, observations, and conclusion of the transpiration experiment are as follows. Results. By observing the tube with dye in it after the experiment, it can be seen that the dye has moved up the stem and into the leaf. Also, by measuring the rate of water loss from the tube, the rate of transpiration can be calculated. Observations. During the experiment, it can be observed that the plastic bag around the stem and leaf forms a closed chamber, and no air is allowed to enter or exit. The plant may droop slightly due to a lack of carbon dioxide, but it should recover quickly. Also, the dye moving through the stem can be observed during and after the experiment. Conclusion. Through the transpiration experiment, it is proven that water and mineral salts are transported through a plant and ultimately exits through the stomata on the surface of the leaf. The dye moving through the stem and into the leaf proved that there is a path in which water and nutrients travel. Also, the rate of water loss from the tube can help determine the rate of transpiration. Therefore, the experiment provides valuable insight into the transport of water and mineral salts in plants. One practical way to investigate the absorption of water in plants is to conduct a potometer experiment. 1. Firstly, cut a stem of a healthy plant underwater and insert it into a clear glass tube. 2. Then, fill the bottom of the glass tube with water. 3. Add a few drops of food coloring to the water to make it easier to observe. 4. Use a rubber stopper to prevent water from escaping from the top of the tube. 5. Ensure that the tube is airtight by using Vaseline or petroleum jelly to seal the joint between the rubber stopper and the glass tube. 6. 
Allow the plant to acclimate to the conditions for a few hours or even overnight. 7. Once the plant is acclimated, use a ruler to measure the initial position of the water in the tube. 8. Record the time and measure the distance the meniscus has moved, at regular intervals, for 10 to 20 minutes. 9. Calculate the rate of water uptake by dividing the distance moved by the time it took. By monitoring the movement of water in the potometer over time, the experiment can provide valuable insight into the absorption of water in plants. Results. During the transpiration experiment, the dye moved up the stem and into the leaf, indicating that water and mineral salts are transported through the plant and ultimately exit through the stomata on the surface of the leaf. The rate of water loss from the tube can also be measured, providing information on the rate of transpiration. Observations. The plastic bag around the stem and leaf forms a closed chamber, and no air is allowed to enter or exit. The plant may droop slightly due to a lack of carbon dioxide, but it should recover quickly. During the experiment, the movement of the dye can be observed through the stem and into the leaf. Additionally, the size and shape of the leaf may affect the rate of transpiration. Conclusion. The transpiration experiment provides valuable information about the transport of water and mineral salts in plants. The movement of the dye through the stem and into the leaf proves that there is a path in which water and nutrients travel. The rate of water loss from the tube can also help determine the rate of transpiration. Overall, this experiment can provide insights into the functioning of plants and their ability to transport nutrients and water from roots to leaves. Transpiration. Transpiration is the process by which plants lose water from their leaves or other aerial parts to the surrounding atmosphere. This process is an essential part of plant growth and development, as it allows the plant to absorb nutrients and water from the soil and transport them to different parts of the plant. During transpiration, water vapor diffuses out of the plant through small openings called stomata, which are primarily located on the underside of the leaves. The driving force behind transpiration is the plant's need to absorb carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, which is facilitated by the exchange of gases through the stomata. Transpiration can be affected by various environmental factors, such as temperature, humidity, wind, and light intensity. Types of transpiration there are three main types of transpiration in plants. 1. Stomatal transpiration. This is the most common type of transpiration, in which water is lost through stomata small openings on the surface of leaves, stems and other aerial parts of the plant. 2. Cuticular transpiration. This type of transpiration occurs through the cuticle, a waxy layer that covers the aerial parts of plants, including leaves, stems and fruits. Cuticular transpiration is relatively low compared to stomatal transpiration. 3. Lenticular transpiration. This type of transpiration occurs through lenticels, which are small openings on the bark of woody stems. Lenticular transpiration is relatively low compared to stomatal transpiration. Overall, stomatal transpiration is the most significant type of transpiration and plays a crucial role in plant water balance and nutrient uptake. Transpiration stream. The transpiration stream is the process by which water and minerals are transported from the roots of the plant to its leaves. During the transpiration stream, water is absorbed by the roots from the soil and transported upwards through the xylem vessels of the plant. This water is transported passively, without any expenditure of energy by the plant. As water molecules are lost through stomata in the leaves, they create a negative pressure gradient, which pulls water upward through the plant. The transpiration stream is important for several reasons. It helps maintain the hydration and nutrient levels of the plant, and it facilitates the exchange of gases, such as carbon dioxide and oxygen, through the stomata. The process of transpiration also helps to cool the plant, as water loss through the stomata results in evaporative cooling. The rate of transpiration, and therefore the transpiration stream, can be affected by environmental factors such as temperature, humidity, light, wind, and soil moisture levels. If the rate of transpiration exceeds the rate of water uptake by the plant, the plant may wilt or even die. Factors that affect the rate of transpiration. There are several factors that can affect the rate of transpiration in plants, including 1. Light intensity. Increased light intensity increases the rate of transpiration as it causes the stomata to open, allowing for more water vapor to escape from the plant. 2. Temperature. Higher temperatures generally increase the rate of transpiration, as they increase the kinetic energy of water molecules, resulting in more rapid diffusion of water vapor from the plant. 3. Humidity. Higher humidity levels can reduce the rate of transpiration, as the concentration gradient between the plant and the atmosphere is reduced. 4. 
Wind. Wind can increase the rate of transpiration by removing water vapor from the surrounding atmosphere, which results in a steeper concentration gradient and a faster rate of diffusion of water vapor from the plant. 5. Soil moisture. Low soil moisture levels can lead to a decrease in the rate of transpiration, as it limits the availability of water for the plant. 6. Plant species and age. Different plant species and age affect the rate of transpiration. Younger plants transpire less than mature plants. Each plant species has optimal growing conditions that affect the rate of transpiration. Overall, the rate of transpiration is regulated by a combination of these factors, with the plant regulating the rate to balance its internal water needs and water loss. Significance of transpiration in plants. Transpiration is a crucial process for plant growth and survival. The significance of transpiration in plants can be summarized as follows. 1. Water absorption. Transpiration helps pull water from the soil and into the plant, allowing the plant to absorb necessary minerals and nutrients along with the water. 2. Nutrient transport. The transpiration stream also helps to transport nutrients such as potassium, calcium, and magnesium from the roots to the leaves. 3. Cooling. Transpiration also helps to cool the plant by regulating the temperature of the leaves. As water evaporates from the leaves, it creates a cooling effect, which is especially important in hot and dry environments. 4. Photosynthesis. Transpiration is necessary for photosynthesis, which is the process by which plants produce food using carbon dioxide and water. Without transpiration, there would not be enough water for photosynthesis to occur. 5. Structural support. Transpiration helps to maintain turgor pressure in the plant, which provides structural support to stems and leaves. Six. Hormonal balance. Transpiration is essential for the regulation of hormonal balance in plants, particularly in the control of stomatal aperture and the synthesis of essential growth hormones such as abscisic acid. Overall, transpiration is a key process for plant growth, water and nutrient absorption, and survival, and it plays a vital role in regulating the plant's overall health and productivity. Revision Exercise 4.9. 1. What do you understand by the term transpiration? Transpiration is the process by which water vapor is released from the stomata of plant leaves and stems into the atmosphere. It occurs as a natural consequence of photosynthesis and helps to regulate the temperature of the plant, transport nutrients, and maintain structural support. 2. Briefly describe the structural factors that affect the rate of transpiration. The structural factors that affect the rate of transpiration are related to the leaf structure. Some of these factors include 1. Surface area. The larger the surface area of the leaf, the more stomata it is likely to have, which can increase transpiration. 2. Number and distribution of stomata. The more stomata a leaf has, the greater the potential for transpiration. The location and distribution of stomata also affect the rate of diffusion. 3. Thickness of cuticle and epidermis. A thicker cuticle and epidermis can reduce water loss by creating a barrier between the plant and the environment. 4. Structure of mesophyll tissues. The structure of mesophyll tissues, the layer of cells between the upper and lower epidermis can affect water flow within the leaf and thus affect transpiration. 5. Presence or absence of hairs or trichomes. Hairs or trichomes on the leaf surface can help to reduce transpiration rates by creating a microclimate around the leaf surface. Overall, these structural factors determine the rate of transpiration by influencing the rate of water vapor diffusion through the leaf surfaces. 3. Differentiate between cohesion forces and adhesion forces. Cohesion forces and adhesion forces are two types of intermolecular forces that exist between molecules. Cohesion forces are the attractive forces that exist between molecules of the same substance. These forces are responsible for the surface tension of liquids and help to hold the molecules together. In the case of water, the hydrogen bonds between water molecules create a cohesive force that allows water to stick to itself, resulting in droplets and the ability to form a meniscus in a container. Adhesion forces, on the other hand, are the attractive forces that exist between molecules of different substances. These forces allow materials to stick together even if they are not the same, such as water droplets sticking to the inside of a glass surface. Adhesion can occur when a polar substance, such as water, is attracted to the charged surface of another material, such as glass. In summary, cohesion forces exist between molecules of the same substance, while adhesion forces exist between molecules of different substances. Both of these forces can play important roles in various natural processes such as transpiration in plants, where water molecules are both attracted and held together via cohesion and adhesion forces. 4. Define the following terms. A. Capillarity. 
B. Transpiration pull. C. Root pressure. D. Transportation stream. A. Capillarity refers to the ability of a liquid to flow in narrow spaces without external input, as a result of the intermolecular forces between the liquid and the solid. Capillary action is responsible for allowing water to move up through the tiny tubes of a plant's xylem despite the force of gravity. B. Transpiration pull is the force generated by the evaporation of water from the leaves of a plant that pulls water molecules up through the plant's xylem in a continuous unbroken column, from the roots to the leaves. It is the main driving force behind the movement of water through the xylem and is generated by the cohesion and adhesion forces between water molecules. C. Root pressure is the positive pressure that can build up in the roots of plants when the soil has a higher concentration of water than the root cells. This pressure can force water upwards through the xylem and out of the leaves through the stomata. Root pressure is less important than transpiration pull in the overall movement of water and nutrients throughout a plant. D. The transportation stream, also known as the translocation stream, refers to the movement of nutrients and sugars throughout a plant via the phloem. Unlike water movement via the xylem, which depends on physical forces such as transpiration pull, movement through the phloem depends on a combination of active transport and pressure flow mechanisms. The transportation stream is responsible for delivering nutrients, such as sugars produced during photosynthesis, to various parts of the plant where they can be stored or used for growth and repair. 5. The removal of a bark from the trunk of a tree kills the tree primarily because of what? The removal of bark from the trunk of a tree can kill the tree primarily because it disrupts the tree's ability to transport water and nutrients throughout its system via the phloem. The phloem is a layer of tissue just below the bark that carries sugars and other nutrients produced by the leaves down to the roots and other parts of the plant. When the bark is removed, this layer is damaged, and the phloem can no longer transport nutrients and sugars, as well as other growth regulators such as hormones, to different parts of the tree effectively. As a result, the tree may begin to starve and die, especially if the damage is severe or if the bark has been removed from the entire circumference of the tree trunk. Bark removal can also expose the tree to infections and insect infestations, which can further weaken and damage the tree, leading to its death over time. 6. Explain the adaptation of xylem to function. Xylem is a specialized tissue in plants that transports water and dissolved nutrients from the roots to the rest of the plant. Xylem is adapted to function efficiently for long-distance water transport through the following ways. 1. Tube-like structure, the cells that form the xylem vessels are long, hollow, and tube-like, forming a continuous network that allows for unimpeded water movement. This structure eliminates the need for water to diffuse through multiple cell walls, which would slow down the movement of water. 2. Thickening of cell walls, the walls of the xylem cells are thickened with lignin, a tough substance that supports the cell and reduces the risk of collapse due to high water pressure. 3. Dead cells, the xylem vessels are composed of dead cells with no cell contents, providing an empty space for water to move through. This also eliminates the risk of cellular processes interfering with water movement. 4. Tracheids and vessel elements, the xylem vessels are made up of two types of cells, tracheids and vessel elements. Tracheids are elongated cells with tapered ends that overlap with each other, while vessel elements are shorter and wider with perforations at their ends. Both of these cell types facilitate water flow by providing additional channels for water to move through. 5. Root pressure and transpiration pull. Xylem transport is driven by a combination of root pressure and transpiration pull. Root pressure is the movement of water up the xylem vessels due to active transport in the roots, while transpiration pull is the movement of water upwards due to the evaporation of water from the leaves, creating a lower pressure potential that pulls water up from the roots. This dual process ensures efficient and continuous water transport from roots to shoots. End of topic.